So my daughter was 25 and she was a loving mother. She, um, she was beautiful. She spent so much time with her kids. She walked her daughter to school every day. She volunteered at the school. She had lunch with her daughter every day. She was just a, a lovely person to be around. And her whole life revolved around her children and making sure that her daughters had everything they needed. My daughter was in high school whenever I noticed that she did have a drug problem. One morning at 6.30, there was a knock at my front door. I opened the door, and my 16-year-old daughter, who was supposed to be asleep in bed, was standing on my front porch without any clothes on. And I could tell there was something definitely wrong with her. She was high on some type of drugs. So I went into panic mode and decided she needs help, and it's help that I cannot give her. She needs drug rehab. So that day, I said, I'm going to find some place to take you to get the help you need because we have a huge problem. That next day, she was at Sundown Ranch in Athens, Texas for drug rehab. And I left her there for a month. I just dropped her off in the middle of nowhere. I would go visit her every weekend. But I knew she needed help, help that I couldn't give her. So after the month, she came back uh, to Austin. She was doing outpatient rehab. So we went every night for outpatient therapy. She changed high schools, and I thought she was okay. I mean, she played on the varsity soccer team. She played competitive kickball. It's, it's a girl's sport, but it's very competitive in Austin. She graduated high school. She met somebody, and she proceeded to have children. She seemed like your normal, everyday young mother, not somebody who had a box by their name that could have died of a drug overdose. I mean, I saw my daughter as cured which obviously that was very naive of me to think that somebody that had done prescription drugs, she, she was taking Xanax in high school, is what she was, bars is what, what she called it. Her life, right before she died of a drug overdose, I had no idea she was taking drugs. I thought she was cured in high school. So it was February 15, 2016. I received a phone call at one o'clock in the afternoon from my counterpart, the other grandmother, um, and she said, your daughter, something's happened to your daughter. I said, that's okay, what hospital is she at? Because the two other phone calls I'd gotten was your daughter had a seizure, they've taken her to the hospital. She said, she's not at a hospital. The paramedics have been back there in the house for an hour now, they won't let us go back there, and they said we needed to call you. My five and a half year old granddaughter got up that morning and um, the baby was crying. So she was trying to get her, her mother to breastfeed Mackenzie. And Layla found my daughter on the floor. She was unresponsive and could not get up. Layla said she tried waking her mom up, but she wouldn't, she was blue. So she ran next door and had um, her grandmother call for help. So my five and a half year old granddaughter found her mom dead on the floor. She died in 2016, so it's been six and a half years. I've tried to, um, you know, my daughter was a loving mother. She loved her two daughters. Um, she made a horrible decision, and that decision cost her everything and shattered our lives. But what I've, what I've tried to work through in this grief, I embrace my grief. Because I love my daughter, I'm going to have great grief. And then I tried to find, like, how, how could this have happened to my daughter? I joined a group of moms that, uh, moms and other people who've lost somebody to an overdose, and together we've worked through this. I now understand, because I've educated myself, that my daughter took a pill, she took a Xanax, and that Xanax contained fentanyl, and it was the fentanyl that, can, that killed my daughter. Not the Xanax that she had taken 10 years ago and she ended up in rehab, but the Xanax with fentanyl that ended up killing her. And so now what I try to do is go out and ad advocate and educate others about the dangers of fentanyl. So if I can you know, get parents to understand that you can be a good parent and your child can still die, um, you need to educate yourself and then go get Narcan because Narcan could save your child's life. I'm a firm believer that there are two things that are gonna help the fentanyl crisis. The first one is education and mental health. People that have substance abuse disorders, they need help. They need, it's a, it is a genetic and medical condition. If you get diabetes or heart disease from what you eat, we don't tell you, sorry, you're on your own. 
We spend millions, billions of dollars each year giving people medication for diabetes and heart disease. But yet somebody who has a substance use disorder, that many of them have mental health, prior mental health issues and they're trying to self-medicate, we tell them, sorry, you're on your own. You know, you're out of luck. So we need to change that mindset and understand that it, it for what it is, it's a medical condition. And then we need to somehow get to these kids that are taking, you know, just that one pill that their friend gives them. They're not, they don't have a substance disorder. They just, they want a pill to either make themselves feel better or maybe they want to be able to study better. So we need to somehow educate those people. I have to accept that my daughter has responsibility for her actions. The problem is, is that her actions have consequences that she didn't understand. She wasn't aware that there's a chance that this drug might have this new fentanyl in it. So she wasn't able to make an informed decision. It just happened to her. And my daughter took drugs in high school. She thought it would be okay. It didn't kill her before. So why would it kill her now? And somebody she knew gave her the drug. He hadn't died from taking the drugs. Why would she die from taking the drugs? You know, when 9-11 happened, we all knew about it, right? There were these 3,000 deaths that just happened and our world changed forever. We have a 9-11 every three weeks and everybody's life goes on as it was before. It's not seen as a problem. And that's the problem. We as a country aren't taking this seriously. The federal government needs to declare fentanyl a weapon of mass destruction because that's what it is. Very little of this drug can end up killing millions of people. And it could be accidentally you come in contact with it, accidentally. We need to declare drug dealers terrorists. That's what they are. They're domestic terrorists because they're peddling a weapon of mass destruction. We invaded Iraq because we thought Saddam Hussein was hiding weapons of mass destruction. We went to Afghanistan to find the leader of the Taliban, which is the same as the drug cartels. And we invaded Pakistan, who was an ally of ours, and kidnapped Osama bin Laden and then executed him at sea. So if we can do that for the weapons of mass destruction that changed our country, the least we can do is go to the border and work in partnership with the Mexican government to eradicate the two drug cartels that are killing Americans.